Um, I'm Jane Harrison, for those of you who don't know me. I might have seen some of you in the past when I worked on the Aiming High for Disabled Children programme because I supported Northumberland through... What we want to see is that, children, that special education needs is picked up early, that support is put in place quickly and that it responds to the needs of children and families, that we have the staff with the knowledge, understanding and the attitude and the skills to be able to support our children, looking at what is going to help them to achieve and make the most of, of every opportunity that they, can, that they can get. We want to see an integrated assessment which is going to replace the statement in process and I'll talk about that um, a little bit later on. Um, and we want to see greater control for children. We've got seven key highlights really that we want to, to, to reform. Um, the next one, yeah. The first one, which I think is actually the most important one, is the involvement of children, young people and parents at the heart of it. We also want parents to feel confident in the services that they're using and really uh, in increasing that confidence and resilience. Um, but most importantly, we really want to put children, young people first, not the services. statement process and the statements, we're going to have a new education healthcare plan. That education healthcare plan will, as it suggests, include education, health and social care. And where the statement is now a 26-week process, the, expect, well, the requirement is that the education health care plan will be completed in 20 weeks, so shortening that time. So in terms of the joint commissioning, there are two new duties. The first one is for local authorities and clinical commissioning groups um, to work together to look at what's needed in the local, um, to meet the local population needs. And then we've got the duty two, so that they, we, we need to secure the health services that are specified in healthcare plans. We need to cover 0 to 25, so it needs to cover all children um, throughout that spectrum. And it'll include things like training, transport, um, social care, health, support for employment and independent living. Um, everyone, my name is Mary Connor. I'm a uh, senior manager for early intervention. Um, Elizabeth and Alison had asked me to come along today, really just to explain um, what my role is and what we're doing in Northumberland in relation to early intervention and prevention services. Um, I suppose some of you might have heard that phrase kind of used a, a bit in relation to um, your children, in, in relation to children's services. Early help again is, is something that's sort of quite. Um, in vogue with government speak at the moment. So it's just really to explain a little bit about what we're doing in Northumberland and um, I guess how it links in with some of the things that Jane was talking about in her presentation. So in terms of it, just a definition, um, this is sort of the definition that's in Northumberland's um, kind of draft early health strategy and it's, I think, you know, early intervention and prevention are words that are kind of bandied around but people don't necessarily know what they, what they stand for. For us, preventative services are those which any child could access. Um, they might not need to, but, you know, they might. Um, so it includes things like health visiting services, immunisations of children, low-level support that's provided at school. Um, so it might be, you know, an extra reading group. Not all children would need that, but they're available universally for children who do. Early intervention is really, I suppose, the next step up for that. So it's about that very early stage when a child might present with um, 
a bit of a concern, a bit of an issue, and it might be school, it might be nursery, it might be a parent who says, mm, I'm not happy about how, how things are going, I'm not happy, you know, there's, there's something not quite right really here, um, you know, we're a little bit worried. And it might be that something very straightforward can be put in um, to support that child. It might just be saying to one other agency, oh, can, can you come and just give a bit of support? But it might be that actually it needs to be a bit more co um, coordinated than that. And at the moment, it could currently be provided through a, a CAF, a Common Assessment Framework, which some of you may have, have heard of. Um, and that might include um, you know, things like low-level support from the, um, the LIST team, or it might include um, an intervention from the school nursing service. Um, but it might include a more complex package for children um, who don't quite hit that, I suppose, statutory framework. So they don't sort of really need all those really, really specialist services. But there's enough concern that there's, there's a few people involved and you need to coordinate a package. Okay. And we know at the moment that that's the bit that probably isn't working as well as it could be. And that's the bit that we need to get uh, right. So my sort of key actions in the first six months of my post really have, have been um, to sort of develop an early help strategy. And I'll talk a little bit about each of these to develop an early health assessment and um, to start looking at what the early health offer is in Northumberland for all children. And I have to stress, we're talking about all children here across Northumberland, not just um, children with SEN or disabilities. This is for all children. 